Hi everyone, my name is Anna Vanderland. I'm our Acting Manager of Communications here at Wellington Dufferin Guelph Public Health, and I'm joined today by Danny Williamson, one of our communication specialists. Today, we're going to be talking to you about the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, we'll do an overview of how we're doing locally in terms of the COVID vaccine rollout, answer some really commonly asked questions that we're asked almost daily here at Public Health, uh, and then talk to you a little bit about what are the steps that you can take uh, to encourage vaccination locally? Uh, so here in Dufferin County, when we take a look at COVID-19 rates over time, we see three sort of peaks, and those are the waves that we talk about a lot in the media. Um, so the first one would have been around uh, between March and May here back in 2020, which really looks like a very small wave now in comparison to some other things that we've been through since then. Then we had our second wave, which peaked uh, in January of this year. And our third wave, uh, which we've sort of just gotten ourselves through, um, which had a really nice steep decline here throughout May and June. And that definitely had a lot to do with our vaccination effort becoming more widespread in those months. Um, so when we look at the provincial plan for reopening, um, what we'll see here is it's really predicated on vaccination rates. If we look along that top row there uh, in the plan, certain vaccination rates need to be achieved until um, before we can move into each stage of the plan. So right now we're in this blue section in the middle, uh, which requires 70% of adults to be vaccinated with one dose and 20% to be fully vaccinated. We are moving to this green stage three on this coming Friday. And that requires between 70 and 80% of adults with one dose and 25% fully vaccinated. And what we're anticipating is that after phase three, uh, any subsequent phases to come, uh, any final reopening is really going to be based a lot on vaccination rates for both first and second dose. So it is really essential that we keep up this momentum and we keep pushing our vaccination rates forward. Uh, if we want to look at, though, how we're doing locally, here's our local population uh, who's eligible, so everyone 12 and over. We're doing really quite well. So 78, 79% of residents have received at least one dose in Wellington, Dufferin, and Guelph. And right now we're sitting at just over 50% of folks being fully vaccinated. However, when last I checked, we had um, you know, around around 30 or 40,000 spots open for the month of July for folks to sign up and get vaccinated. So lots of availability um, throughout July to move up this fully vaccinated number to match that one dose number and hopefully to keep inching up that one dose number as well. The thing we don't really know about this virus is what exactly herd immunity is going to be. So herd immunity, when we talk about that, it's kind of the percentage of folks that we'd want to see vaccinated in order to stop the virus from spreading in our communities. But some studies have estimated that could be as high as between 80 and 90 percent. So we really want to keep driving our first doses upwards. If we break this down by age, we can see this in a little bit more detail. So as you likely know, we started the vaccination program with um, our oldest, most vulnerable populations, and then sort of worked our way down. So these younger populations have had less access to vaccination so far, but they are coming up pretty fast and furious here. So our goal is to have all of these age groups cross that 75% vaccinated line, and then have all of these bars fill up with dark green, meaning everyone's gotten two dose, they're considered fully vaccinated. So that's our plan over the summer. And we'll keep uh, talking to folks like you and um, doing other other methods of getting the word out, making vaccination as easy as possible for people to access. Speaking of accessing vaccination, uh, to get your first or your second dose of a COVID-19 vaccine from public health, you just choose the option that's easiest for you. So the first option we have here is book online. Our website is listed there on the slide. The neat thing about our new 
uh, or our, I'll say our updated booking system is that now uh, there's no uh, finagling with one time codes or any of that. We've made the system as open and as easy to access as possible. So please visit that website there and you can head straight into the booking portal and find a location and a time that'll work for you. Uh, if it's not working out for you online or you're, you're having you're not able to access things online, please give us a call. Our phone number is listed there on the slide. We're open Monday to Friday. We've extended our hours, so it's now 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, lots of availability and some lovely folks who would like to talk to you and book you into an appointment. The other neat thing that we do if you um, are interested is we always post our extra doses at at clinic. So we'll post on social media. You can always find us at, at WDG Public Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So we'll post whenever we have extra doses. We often have extra doses available at our clinics because there's cancellations or no shows or we're able to draw up more doses than we thought we might be able to. Uh, so it's a really good and quick and easy way if you might be driving by a clinic or in the area uh, to just drop in and get your dose that way. And then lastly, if, if you'd be more comfortable receiving your vaccine or it's more convenient for you perhaps to, to walk over to a pharmacy or to visit your doctor, that is absolutely an option too. No matter where you get your vaccine, it's all counting towards those provincial totals. Um, so whatever is easiest and most convenient for you is the route you should take. So to find a pharmacy near you that has supply of either the Moderna or the Pfizer vaccine, head on over to covid-19.ontario.ca slash vaccine hyphen locations. And then you can put in your postal code, get a list of all the pharmacies near you uh, that will carry a vaccine. And lastly, you can give your primary care provider a call. Many primary care providers have both uh, the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine that they're stocking. Give yours a call and see if they might be participating in that. But for folks who still need a first dose, so I said we're we're, we're inching towards that 80% mark, but that means there's about 20% of folks out there who still haven't had their first dose. We want to make it as easy as possible for you. So you can now drop in to any of our mass immunization clinics here at Public Health. We post them all online at our website there slash first hyphen dose hyphen drop hyphen in. Um, and the neat thing about that is that we have pop-up clinics all over the region. Um, we have one coming up in Shelburne this week. So anywhere that's convenient for you, you can go, you can just walk in and say, I haven't received a first dose yet, and they'll slip you into an appointment that very day. And then I really just wanted to mention the accessibility accommodations that are at our clinics. Uh, so we strive as a public health unit to ensure that we accommodate um, all kinds of accessibility language requests, anything else that you might need to make your vaccination experience uh, the best it can be. And so uh, if you are going to require accessibility accommodation or language supports from us, just give us a heads up at least two business days. You can send us an email or give us a call at the number on the slide there. Uh, and we will do our very best to meet your needs. Next up are our frequently asked questions. So these are things that were often asked uh, by the public, you know, maybe through social media, uh, through one of our, our many other channels. And these are just things that we like to go over in presentations like this to make sure that you have the most up-to-date, accurate information on these things that are circulating in our community. So first off, a lot of people ask us, was the vaccine development rushed? It seems like uh, it took nearly no time at all to have these vaccines available to us. In the past, vaccine development trials have taken much, much longer. How did we accomplish this? So first off, uh, you should know that Health Canada will only ever approve a vaccine if it is safe, if it is effective, if it meets our manufacturing standards, which are some of the highest standards in the world, and the benefits must outweigh the risks. And especially with what we're seeing in our community with the Delta variant, we know what the risks of COVID-19 are. Um, and in this case, the benefits of vaccination very much outweigh the risks. 
Uh, so there was really kind of four things that helped us accelerate this vaccination, uh, sorry, this vaccine approval process. One was dedicated funding. So really the entire world was trying to solve the same problem. So there was a lot more funding available than there typically would be. The second was reducing delays in the approval process. So cutting through a lot of that bureaucratic red tape that typically accompanies a process like this. The third was quickly adapting existing research programs. So if you're anything like me before, I don't know, December or January of, of this year, you might not have known what mRNA vaccine technology was. But with the introduction of the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine, we learned all about this new and really neat vaccine technology, uh, which is mRNA vaccines. However, that research had existed for, for almost a decade beforehand. So we were able to take research that already exists and adapt it to solve this problem. And lastly, uh, and probably most importantly, was the way that we changed the designs. Um, not cutting any corners, not skipping any steps, but changed the vaccine trial designs. So typically uh, when you're going through a vaccination trial, it's an incredibly linear process. You have group A, you follow them through time, and you pull in group B, group C, group D, and it's all very linear. But what we did instead this time was we started groups A, B, C, and D all at the same time and then followed them forward. And so that allowed us to shave lots of time um, off this regular trial process. Another question that we're asked, uh, because we do in Ontario right now only provide uh, two dose series vaccines. So all the vaccines that are provided in Ontario, you need to get two shots to be considered fully vaccinated. Uh, so lots of folks would, would rather just get the one. And so while we know that one dose is very effective against COVID-19, what, what I like to say is that that second dose is really going to help extend your protection over a longer period of time, keep you safe longer. Another really important thing to know is that with this Delta variant that's circulating in our communities and with other variants that may emerge over time, um, it is incredibly important to be fully vaccinated. What we've seen with this Delta variant is that second dose vaccine is really what boosts up your immunity uh, and is really required to protect you. Um, so it's incredibly important to not just get the one dose, but show up again for your next appointment to get your second dose. Can I choose which vaccine I get? We have lots of vaccine shoppers out there, and I can absolutely understand that you've done your research on one type of vaccine, and that's the one you'd like. However, our best advice is get vaccinated as soon as you are able to. Uh, based on the supplies that we get from the province, there's no guarantee that you'll get a choice of a specific brand of vaccine at any point in the vaccination process. And really what I'll say about the two mRNA vaccines that we are offering here at Public Health, so the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, is that they are nearly biologically identical. We call them biosimilar. They use the same technology and they have nearly the same efficacy. Um, so it's really important that when you're offered a vaccine in a clinic, you take the first one you're offered um, and, and don't try and reschedule and, and come back later for, for a different brand choice. Uh, this is a, a really neat diagram from the School of Pharmacy at the University of Waterloo that helps explain how do we become fully vaccinated. There's a lot of information out there about uh, the different types uh, and brands of vaccines. So for folks who got AstraZeneca as their dose one, that's, that's a viral vector type of vaccine. But to be considered fully vaccinated in this country, um, you can receive either AstraZeneca, Moderna, or Pfizer as your dose two. Once you've waited two weeks for that immunity to build after your second dose, you're considered fully vaccinated. For folks who got Moderna or Pfizer, uh, for their first dose, you are eligible to get either Moderna or Pfizer for your second dose. As I said, they use the same technology. The efficacy rates are very, very similar. Um, so you're, you're able to interchange those vaccines with no problem. And now I'm going to hand it over to Danny to talk a little bit about how we can move our community forward uh, and what role you can play in that.
Yeah, thanks so much, Anna. Something I want people to think really hard about um, as you're thinking about either your first dose or your second dose, or maybe having that conversation with, with those of you around you, is that we're really seeing, uh, and I didn't invent this phrase, but I, I saw this great phrase last week calling COVID, uh, talking about it becoming a virus um, of the unvaccinated or the undervaccinated. And really what we can see as these vaccines get out there in the field and they start to do their job is they work incredibly, but they only work if we get them. And so it is so important that we uh, we get everyone protected and we start getting into those herd immu immunity numbers because that's the only way we can really safely get back to normal and the only way we can make sure people around us are safe. And so if you're hearing this, uh, if you're thinking about a shot or you're having that conversation with the people in your life, your family, your friends, your coworkers, your soccer team, your book club, whoever, that we're really talking this up because it's so important. Anna, if you could go to the next slide, please. And here's what here's what we know. A huge chunk of our region has stepped up to get their shot. You know, we're getting very close uh, to 80 percent of our 12 and over population in our whole region that have got this shot. We know that um, if you take that other 20%, there are some folks who are never going to get it for a variety of reasons. But we know there's still a group in the middle who are thinking about their first shot. And then we know uh, there's only half of us who have had a second shot so far. So there's a bigger group we're talking to about that second shot. But here's what we know. Here's what we know. Those folks who uh, are still thinking about a first shot, who are thinking about their second shot, we know here are the reasons why they're going to think about getting that shot. One is convenience. It is easier than ever uh, to get a shot, whether it's your first or your second. If you're, it's your first one, it is super easy. You can walk into any clinic, like Anna said, uh, and if they don't, if you don't walk out with a shot, you will absolutely lock, walk it with an appointment. More doctors and pharmacies have it. It's just more convenient. We have more appointments. It is, it is as convenient as it has been throughout the pandemic to get a shot. The second is kind of policies, and what we know, what we're starting to see both here in Ontario. Uh, across Canada and in other jurisdictions is that there are going to be these diverging paths for people who have uh, have been fully vaccinated and those who haven't. And there will be uh, more opportunities if you are vaccinated and more restrictions if you are not. And the reality of that is if you are unvaccinated, you are still a risk of getting COVID, but of also spreading it. And so those policies, whether they're kind of corporate risk, uh, things like uh, airlines or restaurants, um, whether they're kind of employer-employee relationships, all those things are going to ha have, uh, have this kind of web effect of different policies that are going to have different rules for vaccinated and unvaccinated folks. And third, and most importantly for what we're talking about today, is that the, we know the research says that the folks who are still considering a shot, who are on the fence, who are trying to decide the thing that's most important about pushing them over the line is a conversation with a person in their life that they trust. And that is by far and away one of the things that all of us, not just about vaccines, but about many things, that is a place where we place a lot of trust. And so it means that you can have a real impact on this vaccine program. Next slide, please. And we talk a lot about numbers talk a lot about first doses. We talk a lot, a lot about second doses. We talk a lot about age brackets and which doses they have. And those numbers are all important. They guide uh, how safely we can reopen. They guide where we direct our clinics. They, they, they guide where vaccine flows. But they're not the reason why we're all getting shots. And this is our, we have been running this campaign for the last couple of months. This is it. This is why we all need to get these shots to get back to the things and the people that are important to us. And really, you know, we keep saying it. I've said it a couple of times now. Anna said it a few times now. The vaccine is our most important tool uh, to getting back to people and places that are important to us. And so how can you help? Well, many, most of us are all out there on social media. We are too. Um, if you haven't got a first shot yet, if you're waiting for that, if you're waiting for your second shot, when you go to our clinic, uh, that's one of our lovely public health nurses modeling our selfie banner. Take a shot of yourself. Uh, post it out there. It's so important that we normalize how easy it is to get a shot, how convenient the clinic experience can be, um, how we feel afterwards. 
But most importantly, it's so important to normalize and communicate why we're all doing this. And so I often share at this part of the presentation, my wife and I have uh, our second little one on the way in just a few weeks. And so I'm really the only person that's leaving our house right now. So it was so important for me, uh, for us, for our family, for, for me to be able to get those two shots. Um, but also, I really, really like going to the movies and I'd really love to, to get back into a theater sometime, uh, you know, in, in the late summer or maybe the early fall. And the reason I share both of those reasons is because we all have lots of reasons and all of them are valid and all of them are important. So we always ask people to consider, can your experience help somebody else get registered for their vaccine? If you want to share, if, if what, what Anna and I are saying makes sense to you, you want to be involved in this conversation, you want to help get the message out, you don't even have to write this stuff yourselves. We will gladly share it with you. I mentioned that landscape of social media. We are all over it. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, always WDG Public Health. Uh, Monica, who's our who's our social media lead, is on there every day answering questions, uh, sharing logistics, what clinic is open today, who's got extra doses, where can you walk in, all that kind of good stuff. But also the latest and greatest um, information because this uh, this vaccine and this virus, we're learning new things about them every day. So we're trying to put as much of that good information out as we can, as often as we can. So we encourage you to get on there, get your questions answered, but also take that information and rebroadcast it to your network. Let's get this stuff out there as wide as we can to help people make those make those good choices. And this is so important. Uh, if you've been on there, you know, we've all seen kind of like the Facebook shares and the Twitter threads, you know, a hundred things people don't want you to know about the 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 vaccine and, and different pieces of, of misinformation, of bad information. And it's so important that we help people access good, um, well-researched, credible, timely information. And, you know, public health, we are happy. We have lots of information that we're glad to share. We have a, a vaccine information page. We also have a big FAQ page where we take these questions we're hearing, we try to answer as many of them as we can. But here's the thing, folks, public health is not the only, the, we're not the gatekeeper of this stuff. We encourage people to look at what is public health, uh, public health Canada, public health Ontario. What are the good universities, the good research universities saying? What are other government agencies like the CDC saying? But also, we all, many of us have family doctors, we have nurses in our lives, we have pharmacists. It's so important that wherever you choose to get your information, you're looking at a credible source and making sure that you're getting good, responsible, well-searched information. And, and here's the thing, I, I kind of jo joked earlier about the kind of Facebook, Twitter stuff we're all seeing about these kind of myths. Anna talked about a bunch of them earlier. We can't convince everybody who has kind of a myth kind of stuck in their mind about this stuff. But here's what research says is the best way to do it. You share a fact, you warn about why that myth is incorrect, you explain why that information might be incorrect, uh, why it uh, why it maybe once was correct and isn't anymore. Uh, and then you finish with that fact. And if you can repeat it a couple of times, that's what research says is the best way to kind of have that conversation. You're not going to convince everybody, no, no, but nobody can. But if you're having the conversation, just try and keep that, that little model in your mind as you're thinking about it. And here's where we always end the presentation. This is another piece from that communications campaign of ours. And I've said it, Anna has said it, you'll hear it many times from public health and other places. It really is true that you could be the person that helps somebody make the decision to get uh, get vaccinated. And we know that vaccines are the thing that will keep people alive, it will keep people safe, and it will get us back to normal. And so if the conversation comes up, we encourage you to lean into it. If it doesn't, we encourage you to start it because it's so important and you can have uh, an effect and an influence on this. So uh, that's everything from us. Uh, we have lots of places to get that information and we're always glad to share it.